Good evening, bonsoir, guten Abend, guten Abend, buonasera, buenas noches, calispera, dobroveche. Dear laureates of our awards, dear Commissioner Gabriel, dear Executive President Hermann Patzinger, dear colleagues and friends, welcome to the 2020 edition of the European Heritage Awards Ceremony, the highest European honor in the heritage world. Every year, this special award ceremony takes place in a different European city. Last year, we hosted an unforgettable ceremony in Paris, in the magnificent and recently restored Théâtre du Châtelet. This year, we had planned to organize it in Bozar, in Brussels, the beating heart of decision-making in the European Union. Alas, due to the deteriorating health emergency, this was clearly not possible. But fortunately, thanks to digital technologies, we are today, today still able to connect with each other and be close together even if we are physically apart. First, as is the tradition in our ceremonies, we start with a special interpretation of the European anthem, Beethoven's Ode to Joy, performed by the European Union Youth Orchestra, conducted by the legendary Martin Alsop. As you know, this year, the world celebrates Beethoven's 250th birthday, which make the Ode to Joy even more joyous, in spite of all the challenges that Europe and the world face today. Marshal Marcus, Secretary General of the European Union Youth Orchestra, will introduce this special performance to us. Marshal, over to you. On behalf of the European Union Youth Orchestra, Warm greetings to everybody at the European Heritage Awards Ceremony 2020. It's our honour to be present at this very first ever online version of the awards, which seem at the moment more important than ever. It is after all our fate to be living in very challenging times. And at the orchestra, we have the idea of a simple principle, which is when we work together, we work better. So, as, a, as an overture to your interesting awards ceremony, uh, we have a little performance for you of the Ode to Joy from Beethoven's Ninth Symphony in recognition of the 250th anniversary of the birth of Beethoven next month. Surely one of the great cultural heritage figures. Uh, were he alive today, surely he would be receiving one of these awards. This uh, Ode to Joy that we've recorded, uh, which you can see on, on the stage behind me here in Grafenegg, our summer home, was recorded last month and is part of the Global Ode to Joy Challenge. The Global Ode to Joy Challenge, which was launched in October, is very simple and powerful, and that is to invite people to spread joy at a difficult time like this. We hope you enjoy our little overture. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, Marshall. Thank you, Marin. And many thanks to the musicians of the European Union Youth Orchestra for this wonderful start of our ceremony. In tune with Beethoven's Ode to Joy, this evening we wish to make an ode to all the heritage heroes of Europe. Let us share and celebrate Europe's heritage success stories. In these trying times, may our award winners' achievements give us some much needed hope and joy. Indeed, today we need more than ever positive, uplifting and hopeful messages. And my wish for today is to bring you a very simple and yet powerful message. Let us cherish all the more what brings us closer together, our shared cultural heritage in our common house, our Europe. This is the very first time that we organize a fully digital award ceremony. So we are a little bit nervous, but let's hope all will go well. We have put together a very special program in the digital presence of our honorable laureates, joining us live from so many places across Europe. Wonderful. I'm delighted to see them all on screen. Uh, how exciting. From all over Europe, you are all connected. So welcome, welcome to you. This is your evening. So I also wish to greet so many heritage professionals, volunteers and enthusiasts who are attending this online ceremony. Already this morning, we have received more than 1,000 registrations. And I hope all of you are now watching our live stream across Europe and beyond. And special greeting to all of you from Europa Nostra headquarters in The Hague, in the Netherlands. The European Heritage Awards are only possible thanks to a long-standing and fruitful partnership between Europa Nostra and the European Commission. For this reason, I am particularly pleased to invite you to Sofia, the capital city of Bulgaria, and to introduce Maria Gabriel, who is co-hosting this ceremony with us for the very first time in her position as European Commissioner for Innovation, Research, Culture, Education and Youth. Dobar večer, Sofia. Commissioner Gabriel, a very, very warm welcome to you. I very much hope that this will be only the first of many ceremonies that we will have the pleasure of co-hosting together. More than ever, we need political leaders who, like yourself, understand and advocate the importance of culture and cultural heritage for Europe's recovery in the aftermath of the pandemic, but also in general for the future of our Europe. Madam Commissioner, Dia Maria, over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear Mr. Patzinger, dear Sneska, ladies and gentlemen, friends of cultural heritage. It is an honor and privilege for me to be together with you. And allow me, Sneska, to, to tell you immediately that I really hope that it's not only the first co-hosting ceremony, but there will be a long series where we all will continue not only to show our extraordinary richness, but to continue to, to build together our common future, a strong Europe with culture at his heart. So it would have been a pleasure for me to welcome you all in Brussels to this award ceremony, but special times require special measures. So I'm happy that digital technologies allow us to meet in, in a virtual format. And no reason to be nervous, Neshka. We are all here to celebrate, to enjoy, to share, and that's the most beautiful aspects of our cultural heritage in Europe. This is a great opportunity to celebrate Europe's rich cultural heritage and to reward excellence in protecting and promoting that heritage. Because you know, I'm very often saying that cultural heritage is Europe's soul and it represents the very essence of our civilization. 
It is our strongest bond to the past, to our present and to our future. And it can be so diverse, so unique. Through the European Heritage Awards, Europa Nostra Awards, we want to raise awareness about the challenges that our cultural heritage is facing and encourage the exchange of good practices. Your projects, dear ladies and gentlemen, prove us how important it is to understand and preserve our past in order to comprehend and build our future. You have our immense gratitude for that, because with the implementation of your projects, you will provide opportunities for European citizens, especially young people, to closely connect with our rich cultural diversity. We will announce today the Grand Prix and the Public Choice Award selected among the 21 winners of the European Heritage Awards. We will announce the winners of the Ilucidare Special Prize. And as such, by bringing these two awards together, we show how synergies work between two of our funding programs, Creative Europe and the European Framework Programme for Research and Innovation, Horizon 2020. Now allow me to share with you a few words about the difficult times we have been experiencing. We are all too aware of how severely the sector of culture and cultural heritage has been affected by the crisis. At the same time, you keep putting beauty into the world through your creativity and bring us closer together. During the last months, I have seen on one hand, we have extraordinary capacity of mobilization and creativity. But on the other hand, we need resources, we need targeted investments and greater support in critical moments. In, on my side, I will use this unique opportunity that for the first time, culture, education, research and innovation are within the same portfolio. This is a real knowledge square based on education, research, innovation and service to society, but its roots are in our cultural heritage. And together with my team, we'll continue to work in order to provide valuable support to you, to the cultural sector. That's why you know that a few minutes ago, we have some good news coming from the European Parliament. I think that if that was possible, that was because of you, of your energy, of your vision, of your talent. And I think that we should stay united, united in our extraordinary diversity. That's a very good signal. Now, what is important is to continue to build synergies, not only to use Creative Euro Program and Horizon Euro Program, but to work closely with our regions. That's why we are preparing an action plan together with them, to work together with the European Institute of Innovation and Technology, to use the opportunity how with the different structural funds, and especially with our citizens, with our regions and with our member states, we can provide greater support to the sector. And last but not least, I would like to mention here the initiative of the President von der Leyen on the creation of a new European Bauhaus. I think that we all count on you, on your ideas, on your expertise, on your capacity to help us shape this concept and to have a content, because I fully believe that the heart of this project is culture. We need to transform this concept in a cultural project at the heart of our European vision for the future. And I think that it's a great opportunity for artists, archaeologists, architects, students, researchers to help us define the aesthetics of the ecological transition, creating a bridge between science and technology and culture and art. And we'll be grateful to have your idea to develop such a space of creativity and innovation to its full potential. So I believe, I believe that the European Heritage Awards and the Elucidare Special Prize will help you get the visibility and recognition you deserve because each one of you, in one way or another, has made an outstanding contribution to the task of protecting, 
enhancing and promoting our cultural heritage. It's a privilege for me. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, dear Commissioner Gabriel, for your forceful message and for your inspiring and hopeful uh, words. And thank you for pronouncing the word beauty. We don't hear very often political leaders stressing the importance of beauty. And thank you for that. And let's continue jointly to do that. And thank you for encouraging us to continue moving mountains and building bridges because we are not only stronger together, we are better together. So let us continue together now this ceremony. I thank you for staying with us for the entire duration of this ceremony. Now, ladies and gentlemen, today, we will honor 27 projects from all over Europe. We will also announce three Grand Prix winners and the Public Choice Award winner. And during the ceremony, our laureates will stay connected with us all over Europe. Let me just check if they are still well connected. Yes, you are there. So please stay, stay there for the entire ceremony. But before honoring the winners of the European Heritage Awards, Europa Nostra Awards, we shall start by honoring the nominees and winners of the very first edition of Illucidare Special Prizes for Heritage-Led Innovation and Heritage-Led International Relations. To tell us about the importance of the Illucidare Special Prizes, I'm delighted to introduce Professor Kuhn van Valen from the University of Leuven in his capacity as coordinator of the Illucidare project. Guten Avon Antwerpen, Guten Avon Kuhn. Together, we will introduce the six shortlisted projects for the very first edition of the Illucidare Special Prizes. And these projects were selected by the expert jury chaired by Laurent Lévi-Strauss from France. Bonsoir, Paris. Bonsoir, Laurent. Hello, good evening from Paris. Uh -huh. Bonsoir, Kuhn, over to you. So, thank you, Sneska. Uh, as a coordinator of the Illucidari project, I'm truly honored to introduce the shortlisted projects for the Illucidari Special Prizes. The first prize of its kind to recognize change makers in heritage led innovation on the one hand, and international relations on the other. For this very first edition of the Illucidari Special Prizes, six inspiring projects were shortlisted, three for heritage-led innovation and three for heritage-led international relations. These special prizes are supported by the Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Program of the European Union and are one of the highly visible actions of our Illucidari project of which both Kai Leuven and Europa Nostra are proud partners. Together with other six European and international organizations, KEA, European Affairs from Belgium, International Cultural Center from Poland, World Monuments Fund in Spain, Culture Heritage Without Borders from Kosovo, Universidad de Cuenca in Ecuador, and IMEC in Belgium. So that's the team. Let us start with the nominees for the Illucidare Special Prizes for Heritage-Led Innovation. How can heritage and innovation reinforce each other? Cultural heritage can spur innovation in many different ways. It can be technological, social, economic, political, environmental, or legal. The Illucidare Special Prizes reward heritage practices that combine disciplines that create new knowledge and develop cutting-edge solutions, tapping into cultural heritage as an inestimable resource for the innovative, creative, and collaborative society. With these special prizes, we identify and promote success stories of these innovation, innovators, and we want to support them and upscale their achievements. Up to you, Snesca. Yeah. The other Illucidare Special Prize category covers heritage-led international relations. How do heritage and international relations 
cultural diplomacy support one another? Cultural heritage helps us to learn about each other, but also about ourselves. As such, it can be a powerful tool to build bridges between people, communities, and countries, reinforcing cultural dialogue and mutual understanding. The Elucidari Special Prizes contribute to the recognition of cultural heritage as a key element in people-to-people -people international relations and a basis for cooperation between European Union, international organizations like UNESCO, and partner countries, building on mutual interests and on equal footing. Nasca. Many thanks to Professor Kuhn van Balen and the entire Illucidare Consortium. But we all know that few images are worth a thousand words. Therefore, let us embark on a journey across Europe. We will start with the short-lived projects for the Illucidare Special Prize for Heritage-Led Innovation. Start the video, please. Tere Tartu. Hello, Tartu. Good evening. So, and from Tartu, we go to Avila. Next video, please. Hola, Avila. Good to see you there. And then from Avila, we will go to Den Bos. Next video, please. Goedenavond, goedenavond en bos. Zijn jullie daar? Are you there? So yes. now, are here. ah, you're here. Good, good. We can't see you, but uh, we are glad that you are connected with us. Now, Commissioner Gabriel, as a commissioner in charge of uh, both research and innovation on the one hand, and culture and heritage on the other hand, you must be delighted to announce the winner of the Illucidare Special Prize 2020 for Heritage-Led Innovation. Even our envelopes are beautiful, you know. <laughs> Estonian, Estonian Print and Paper Museum, congratulations! <laughs> Dear President, dear Commissioner, um, their colleagues across Europe. Uh, when we started out 10 years ago, we never imagined we would be in, in this place. We honestly had no idea what we were doing, just we had this responsibility of preserving and sharing a part of our common history. And in these times when there are so many things uh, to divide us, I am truly honored that the Europa Nostra and the Sidara crisis uh, seek to acknowledge uh, initiatives that try and find common values uh, that we share in this uh, union. And with this sentiment, I am extremely happy for this, uh, to, to accept this nomination. Uh, thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you very much, Lemmy. So I, I must say that uh, we can see your team is so successful because there is so much women around you. So I would like really to encourage this. Thank you very much. Really heartfelt congratulations on behalf of the European Commission, Europa Nostra and the Lucidare Consortium. I would like just to tell one, one sentence. You, you show us that our heritage is not just about keeping and cherishing the traditions of the past. It is about the constant reinvention of the past and to find new ways to tell the stories of our predecessors, innovative ways to reconnect the people of today with the generation before us. And thank you very much, Tipa. That's a great example of that continuous journey. Thank you, Commissioner Gabriel. Congratulations to the winner. And uh, so now we will announce the three shortlisted projects for the Irusudare Special Prizes for Heritage-Led International Relations. Start the three video, please. <laughs> Buon pomeriggio, buonasera Bergamo and Tahia Taiba, Damascus. So glad to see that we have both of you connected. Stay tuned. And from Bergamo and Damascus, we go to Wroclaw. Video, please. Pozdrowienia, Wroclaw, good to see you. And from Wroclaw, we will go to the United Kingdom and the Czech Republic together. Video, please. Greetings to the United Kingdom and Dobre Odpoledne, Czech Republic. Good to see you together. And now, Commissioner Gabriel, I invite you to unveil the second big winner of this evening, the Ilucidare Special Prize for Heritage-Led International Relations. Over to you. Thanks, Neska. And the winner is... Archaeology for Young Future, Italy and Syria. Congratulations to this excellent project. I'm pleased now, I'm pleased to give the floor. We have Stefania with us and Yasmin. Please, girls, it's a pleasure for us. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we are truly delighted and proud to have been awarded this prize. Um, so our project inspires students in Syria and Europe to find out that their past and their cultural heritage is something they share, notwithstanding their uh, distance in, in space. And so we have always used a very simple approach and a very simple technology. And uh, this is what allows us to continue our project even today, even though many schools are closed. So we would simply like to thank all those who have been involved, all the educators and teachers and, and colleagues, those of the first years uh, in Syria. So Amer Ahmed, I know he's looking at us from Syria, and uh, Enzo Sartori in Italy and all his colleagues, and also uh, all the uh, educators and teachers who are working today from Italy, Greece, um, Syria, and even the United States. 
Uh, we would also like to thank all the staff of the Avaza, of our association, which is very young. So again, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, the Termozar Urkesh Archaeological Project, in particular its director Federico Buccellati, and the International Institute for Mesopotamian Area Studies, who have always believed in this project. And so many thanks to Professors Giorgio and Marilyn Buccellati. And of course, many, many thanks also to the jury of the Lucidare uh, Special Prizes. So many thanks to everyone. We are really, really happy for this prize. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I would like really to say that your project give us hope. Your project touches our heart. It's so beautiful to see how young people embrace and learn about their heritage in this great cooperative project between Italy and Syria. We can do better together in this project is a proof of it. I think that this project can be also replicated in other European schools, promoting education in the field of heritage and inclusiveness. And thank you very much for showing the example and for inspiring us. Thanks a lot. Thank you, thank you very much. Congratulations, congratulations. But ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, what a better way to honor and celebrate our two Ilucidare Special Prizes winners than with a mu beautiful musical intermezzo. The following musical piece is all the more special as it is linked to one of the last year's award laureates, Le Dimore del Quartetto from Italy which supports young quartets rehearsing and performing in most important villas, palaces, and cultural places in Italy and in Europe. This special performance will be introduced by Marco Magnifico, Executive Vice President of FAI, Fondo Ambiente Italiano, a leading heritage organization and an important member organization of Europa Nostra in Italy. Marco over to you. It is my great pleasure today to introduce you to the Quartetto Indaco, who will play a Beethoven quartet for you today from the wonderful Villa Panza in Varese, who is one of the most important properties which owns to our foundation, FAI, Fondo per l'Ambiente Italiano, and which contains a wonderful collection of contemporary international art. This performance has been made possible by the very distinguished Italian cultural association Le Dimore del Quartetto, uh, which supports a young string quartet playing in the most important villas and palaces, so import, very important uh, cultural monuments. Le Dimore del Quartetto uh, won the European Heritage Award uh, of Europa Nostra in 2019. Le Dimore del Quartetto has been working with FAI, Fondo Ambiente Italiano, since many, many years, putting together resources, uh, occasions and energies for the benefit of arts and of everybody. I'm very glad for the decision of the Dimore del Quartetto to dedicate this performance to Giulia Maria Mozzoni Crespi, a winner of the Grand Prix of the European Heritage Award of Europa Nostra in 2016 and founder of FAI. She died in, uh, in July of this year and she has been the most brave, generous and strong heroine in protecting uh, landscape, heritage, and nature. And we are very grateful to her and to the Dimore di Quartetto to dedicate this concert to her. The Quartetto Indaco will now play for us the second movement of the Ludwig van Beethoven Quartet No. 16, Opera 135, and uh, enjoy it. <laughs> Thank you. 
I'm sure you have all enjoyed. Many thanks to Quartetto Indaco and Imore del Quartetto for this beautiful recording of Beethoven's music in Villa Panza property of Fai. And it's very, very special thanks for dedicating this recording to the memory of the legendary Giulia Maria Mozzoni Crespi, who was one of the Grand Prix winners of our awards back in 2016. Her legacy will live on through the work of so many of us across Italy and across Europe. Ladies and gentlemen, time has come to introduce to you the European Heritage Awards, Europa Nostra Awards. These awards have championed for almost 20 years the most compelling, exemplary, and important heritage initiatives from across the continent. Throughout uh, these 20 years of lifespan, the awards have celebrated and promoted the highest standards in four categories, heritage conservation, research, education, training, and awareness raising, as well as the long-standing dedication of professionals and volunteers. Since 2002, the European Heritage Awards have been run by Europa Nostra in partnership with the European Commission and with the support of the Creative Europe Programme of the European Union. Today, this prestigious prize is recognized as Europe's top honor in the heritage field. Commissioner Gabriel, let me thank you and the European Commission for our excellent cooperation in this important initiative. We can be very proud of the results that we have jointly achieved, a truly pan-European network of excellence, serving as an invaluable and tangible support system for Europe's heritage world and also for Europe's policy making. Commissioner, over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sneska. Thank you for the years of fruitful cooperation between Europa Nostra and the Commission. Allow me really to start with one simple question. Why are these awards important? Because we strongly believe in the convincing power of example. In difficult times, we need more stories of dedication, bold action, resilience and exceptional skills. Let us celebrate what we as Europeans excel in. The 2020 winners of the European Heritage Awards, Europa Nostra Awards, represent what Europa stands for. Creativity, resilience, innovation, solidarity, talent and dedication. This makes me proud as European Commissioner and as a European citizen. I sincerely thank each one of them for demonstrating yet again that Europe's shared cultural heritage is not only part of our past, but a valuable asset for tackling our present day challenges and for ensuring a better future for all. As you know, according to a recent Eurobarometer study, a large majority of Europeans, 82%, take pride in cultural heritage and agree it can improve their quality of life and a sense of belonging to Europe. We'll have personal stories related to cultural heritage and we all experience it and cherish it. But cultural heritage goes far beyond our personal experiences. It shapes our collective life and our future. It plays a key role in holding up the values by which we live for building resilience of our societies and at the same time for the economic development of our regions and cities. And the European Heritage Awards are the perfect illustration of this. If you have a closer look at this year's winners and all the winners since 2002, you will discover that their projects are not, not only safeguarding endangered heritage and raising awareness, but that they are in their own way inclusive and promote sustainability and innovation. Apart from that, I think that this award scheme is so important and successful because it puts a spotlight on grassroots initiatives and honors heritage projects which are so dear to the local communities, but at the same time connect 
them with others in their home country and beyond. It also aims to enhance the understanding and appreciation of the European diverse heritage amongst the younger generation. So yes, Sneska, they all have the power of example. As, it, as Kun van Balen so rightly pointed out, they can build bridges and contribute to mutual understanding. This makes this award scheme so unique. Let me conclude with a big thank you to Europa Nostra in general, and Sneska and her small team in particular for your tremendous work. Since 2002, you are managing the European Heritage Awards, Europa Nostra Awards, on behalf of the European Commission in an outstanding manner. Thank you. Thank you, dear Maria, for your very important and also kind words. So, ladies and gentlemen, the moment has arrived to honor the 2020 winners of the European Heritage Awards, Europa Nostra Awards. This year, the European Commission and Europa Nostra have selected 21 outstanding achievements in four different categories. This is how we will proceed. We will introduce each category by a series of video clips, and at the end, I will ask Commissioner Gabriel to reveal the winners of our three Grand Prix and our winner of our Public Choice Award. Our celebration continues. So, let us start with conservation, the category with the highest number of applications. The selection of these awards was made by a European jury of experts chaired by Professor Kuhn van Balen director of the Raymond Lemaire Institute from the University of Leuven in Belgium, who, as you have already heard earlier and seen earlier, is also leader of the Illucidare Consortium. Kuhn, I'm glad to see that you are still with us. Please remain until the end of this wonderful evening. So let us start the video clips presenting all nine winners in these categories. Please start the first video clip. Goedenavond Antwerpen, gefeliciteerd met uh, deze prijs. Now, from Antwerpen we go to the island of Gwaar. Lijep pozdrav i sve čestitke Ostrvu Hvaru, Arsenalu Hvaru. Dobro veče. So from Hvar, we will go to Leipzig. Video please. Guten Abend, Leipzig. Guten Grüße. Abend. Alle Beste. And from Leipzig, we go to Budapest. Let Budapest, uh, congratulations. 
And from Budapest, we will go to L'Aquila. Buonasera, L'Aquila, auguri. Good to see you. So now from L'Aquila, we will go to Tilburg. Video, please. Van harte gefeliciteerd, Tilburg. So, good to see you. And from Tilburg, we will go to the province of Burgos in Spain. Please, video. España, felicidades. And from the province of Burgos, we go to Bois de Chêne. Bonsoir, bonsoir, Bois de Chêne, félicitations. And from Bois de Chêne, we go to Shropshire. And congratulations to England. What a wonderful bridge. We very much like building bridges in Europe. So this bridge is a particularly symbolic one. So ladies and gentlemen, let us give a big digital applause to all nine winners in the category conservation. And uh, after that, we shall continue with another category. This category pays tribute to outstanding projects of heritage research. The selection of the winners was made by an independent jury of European experts chaired by architect Étienne Poncelet from France. Bonsoir Lille, bonsoir Étienne. Cela fait plaisir de te voir. So please start the video clips presenting all three winners in this category. First video, please. What are the Portugal, uh, the Portuguese coordinator of this European project? Good to have you with us. And from um, Portugal, we go to Torino. Video, please. Buonasera Torino, auguri. 
So, and then from Torino, we will go to Leiden. Video, please. Goedenavond, Leiden. Van harte gefeliciteerd. So, ladies and gentlemen, let us give a big digital applause for all three winners from the category research. And after that, let us continue. The awards in the category dedicated service to heritage honor individuals and organizations for their long-standing commitment to cultural heritage in Europe. The selection of these winners was made by an independent jury of European experts, chaired by Andrula Vasiliou from Cyprus, who has been herself one of the predecessors of Maria Gabriel as European Commissioner responsible for culture, and who we are very proud is today Vice President of Europa Nostra. Kalispera Nicosia. Kalispera Andrula. Kalispera. Good evening, Commissioner. Good evening, friends. Greetings from Nicosia, Cyprus. And I must say it was really an honor and a pleasure to work together with my colleagues on this fantastic uh, jury for dedicated service. And I congratulate all of them for their dedication and especially, of course, the winners. <laughs> Thank you so much for, to you and other members of the jury. So let's see um, who are the winners. So uh, let's start the video clips, please. Amsterdam, goedenavond en van harte gefeliciteerd. <laughs> and from Amsterdam, we will go to Geneva. Bonsoir et félicitations à la Société de lecture à Genève. So now let us also give a big digital applause to these two winners of the, our awards in category dedicated service. And then let us continue. Last but not least, the category education, training and awareness raising. The selection of these awards was made by an independent jury of European experts, chaired by Maka Dvalishvili from Georgia. Good evening, Tbilisi. Good evening, Mapa, Maka. Good to see you. So please start the video clips presenting all seven winners in this category. First video, please. Zdravim Praha, uh, good evening and congratulations. So, and from Prague, we will go to Arlsen. Video. Arlson, good evening. Uh, congratulations. So, and from Arlson, 
we will go to Gödöllő. Let Gödöllő. Good evening. Congratulations. And now, from Gödöllő, we will stay in Hungary. So, video, please. Uh, dear colleagues, uh, very good to see you and congratulations on this very, very important project and award. So, and then from Hungary, we will go to Spain. Video, please. <laughs> Buenas noches, uh, España, Dobry Vecher, Poland. Congratulations for this extremely important uh, exhibition that definitely deserved our award. So I see now also Dobry Vecher, uh, Poland uh, as well. So thank you for being with us. And from Spain and Poland, we will go to Romania. Video, please. Salutari, Ravaria, uh, good evening and congratulations. And now from Romania, we will go to Turkey. Akshamlar, uh, Ankara, good evening and congratulations. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would like to ask you to give a big digital applause to all seven winners from the category Education, Training and uh, Awareness Raising. So, distinguished Award winners, ladies and gentlemen, the time has come to put an end to the suspense and to unveil who won the three Grand Prix for 2020. The three Grand Prix winners were selected by the awards juries and the board of Europa Nostra from among this year's winners and will receive a 10,000 euro financial contribution each. Commissioner Gabriel, the honor of announcing tonight's three Grand Prix winners is all yours. Thank you, Sneska. So, the first Grand Prix goes to Auschwitz, not long ago, not far away, Poland and Spain. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh... Madam Commissioner and Sneska, it's really an, an honor and a pleasure and many congratulations to all the winners. Uh, I think all the projects were wonderful and very powerful. And of course, in, in our case, um, I think I need to do two things very quickly. 
The first one is to show our gratitude to all the people that have uh, made possible the exhibition, especially here uh, represented um, by the, uh, the Outreach Birkenau State Museum by Pavel Sawicki, who is someone so important in the in the story of this exhibition. And of course, to all of our curators, historians, educators, designers, producers, and uh, communications team and collections. And the other, I think that um, aside from all of this gratitude, we need to, I think it's very important, this reflection done by Madam uh, Commissioner and by Europa Nostra, coming from a European institution to recognize the importance of also looking into this very complex and traumatic part of our history and of uh, an understanding that being aware of what happened and preserving that part of history as we do in the exhibition as the museum does in, in its everyday work helps to understand critically our own present and hopefully build, build a better future. So um, we are talking about Europe. I've heard a lot about heritage and about legacy and uh, I think Cicero in a different, completely in a completely different context, he said that the the life of the dead is placed in the memories of the living. And I think this is very appropriate to understand that we also have a responsibility as individuals, but also as a community to uh, to keep the legacy alive of what happened no, not so far uh, not so far away and not long ago from, from where we stand today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. So now the second Grand Prix goes to Tramontana Network 3, France, Italy, Poland, Portugal, and Spain. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Another Luis speaking. <laughs> Thank you so much uh, for this award. This is a great moment for a grassroots project that uh, for almost one decade seeks to value the cultural heritage of European mountain and rural communities through social research, contemporary art, and digital archives. We deeply thank the jury of the Europa Nostra Awards, the European Commission, for having supported the project through three Creative Europe uh, projects, to all local partners in Portugal, by Northern Northern, in Spain, Audio Lab, in France, Nos Alpes de Bigorre, Numericulture Gascon, Eth Ostal Comanges, Italy, Lem Italia and Bamboon, and Poland, Academia Profil. But last but not least, to all farming and rural communities scattered all around Europe, whose past and present voice needs also to be heard. This is our compromise. This is our commitment to, to all these rural communities throughout the world, the, throughout Europe. And uh, our project, in a way, connects uh, communities, local governments, uh, uh, associations, universities. So we kind of uh, have this, uh, I would say, network, uh, a very deep network uh, connected throughout Europe. Thank you. Thank you so much for this, for this event and this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much, Luis. Thank you again for showing us how we can put research tools at the disposal of rural communities, how it is important to preserve and to cherish their heritage. Congratulations again for the entire team. Thank you. It is now time to reveal the winner of the third Grand Prix, which goes to Basilica of Santa Maria di Colimaggio, L'Aquila, Italy. Congratulations. <laughs> So now I will give the floor to Alessandra Vittorini, director of the Fondazione Scuola Beni e Attività Culturali. It's a pleasure for me, Alessandra. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. We are very glad. We are very proud of this award. Uh, this is an award we, we are surprised, really. Thanks, Thanks so much. And so, uh, we, we were we worked uh, since 2009 uh, to the reconstruction after the earthquake, and uh, the Basilica di Colemaggio uh, it was uh, since the beginning a symbol, a symbol of the history, a symbol of the destruction, and now the symbol of the rebirth. And we are very glad that Europe and Europa Nostra and the jury uh, recognize uh, the value 
of this monument, but also the value of the work and the value of uh, that the basilica represents for the community and for the city. Uh, since uh, uh, the end of the 13th century, this basilica uh, uh, is, is, is growing, growing with the history of the town and is accompanying the history of the town. And now the birth in 2017 has been the birth of the community. And so uh, it, it was the home of the Perdonanza Celestiniana for over seven centuries. And now it's recognized as an European example of good practice. Uh, it was a difficult challenge, one thanks to the commitment of many, which has returned to the city its symbols, whose value has been confirmed by the recent inclusion of the Perdonanza in the UNESCO list of intangible cultural heritage. A pivotal step in the recovery of the city cultural heritage, which is recomposing its image in an extraordinary and surprising framework, thanks to the constant and passionate work of the members of the staff of our superintendenza that I have been the honor to direct since eight years. I will dedicate to every of this fantastic team this prize. Thanks, really to all of them, thanks to the Europa Nostra, thanks to Commissioner Gabriel. And now we are proud to be part of this fantastic network, European network for the future of our work, of our uh, cultural heritage and for Europe. Thanks so much, really. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alessandra. We can feel your emotion and what I can say that is your emotion is ours at this moment. Thank you very much. Again, congratulations for the excellence of your project in terms of innovation, technical and scientific st standards for conservation. But congratulations for the symbolic value of your project for the local community and for saving heritage at risk. Thanks again. Thank you. So, so thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Gabriel. Uh, I must say uh, I feel very emotional. I feel through, in spite of all these distances, through the digital mean, the emotion and the sense of pride of all the, the winners uh, of, uh, of our three Grand Prix. And I want also to congratulate them on behalf of Europa Nostra. We shall definitely count on all of them as uh, important ambassadors of our shared endeavors uh, to use these multiple benefits and huge, huge value and potential of cultural heritage to build a better future of our Europe. And now it's time to reveal which of the 21 projects won the hearts and minds of the European public. I'm pleased to take you now to Berlin and to invite Hermann Patzinger, Executive President of Europa Nostra, to unveil the Public Choice Award winner. Guten Abend, Hermann. Over to you. Good evening from Berlin. Um, dear Commissioner Gabriel, dear Sneska, colleagues and friends, dear ladies and gentlemen. Yes, it's really an honor for me to announce now the Public Choice Award 2020. It is a very special moment. Every year, heritage enthusiasts from all across Europe are invited to cast their vote online for their favorite award winner from among the excellent laureates, and my congratulations to all of them, of the European Heritage Awards Europa Nostra Awards. This year, you won't believe, over 12,000 people, over 12,000 people who are passionate for cultural heritage voted for the project that is closest to their heart. Why is this important? Because people make places. What makes cultural heritage so meaningful and special is the deep connection that people and communities have with it. For this reason, and like every year in the 2020 edition, of Europe's top heritage honor, we have invited the public to have their say. Obviously, it was not an easy choice, as all 21 award winners which we just met are truly inspiring. 
As Maria, one of the voters of the Public Choice Award from Belgium, commented, I quote, they are all excellent projects. I'm very impressed with all the candidates. I believe they all are immensely beneficial in different ways. This indeed is true. And Daniel, another voter from Romania, accurately stated, I quote again, they are all great projects, wonderful implementers and happy communities. But there's always a but, a choice had to be made. Which of the 2020 award winners is the most compelling of the European public and has managed to win over their hearts and minds? In third place, an icon iconic project that has inspired voters in Europe and beyond. One of the voters, Reinhilde, said, I quote, after years of waiting, this beautiful renovation has finally been completed and gives visitors the opportunity to step in. A well-deserved award. Thank you for this recognition. The third runner-up is Rubens Garden Screen and Garden Pavilion in Antwerp, Belgium. In the second place, a project that has raised incredible public support SK, a voter from the United Kingdom, noted, I quote again, this, projects, this project makes sure that we never forget history, even in the darkest moments, and is a timely reminder for Europe in the current climate. The second runner-up is Auschwitz, not long ago, not far away from Poland and Spain. And now, the winner of the Public Choice Award 2020. One of the voters, William, has enthusiastically stated, I quote, I only hope the inspiring example set by this project is followed in other European countries. We, marry, we very much hope so too. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to announce and honor the winner of the Public Choice Award 2020 the Ambulance for Monuments in Romania. Our heartfelt congratulations on behalf of the whole Europa Nostra family, the European Commission, and of course, all the voters. It's indeed a really great project. Thank you. Back to you, Sneska. Thank you, Herman. And I am very, very pleased to give the floor to Veronica Vaida, architect at Monumentum Association from Romania. Congratulations. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Sneska and everybody. We are extremely happy to receive this prize. And I think this prize goes to every Romanian that voted because it is, for, it is first of all, their prize. Um, everyone has a place in uh, our projects, young, old, architects is historian, journalist, artist. We had so many professions coming to our working site to just uh, put a nail. Also, we are very, um, we want to thank all the journalists that covered with over 180 news in the May when we received the, the Europa Nostra Award. And of course, all our volunteers who are doing enormous, enormous efforts to come to the, our sites and to stay in not very comfortable uh, places most of the time. And uh, least but not last, we want to thank His Royal Highness, Prince of, of Wales, uh, who supported us uh, from the beginning in our four years activities and through the Prince of Wales uh, Foundation. Um, I don't know, I'm very, I have a lot of emotions and uh, thank you, the jury, and uh, it is great to be part of this European family. And I really hope that the, this project will, uh, will get spread along Europe and we can spread the knowledge. We are now having five branches, uh, seven branches in Romania. We are covering 50% of national territory and we hope to cover all of Romania in the following years. Thank you. 
Congratulations, dear Veronica, to you, to Eugen, to whom we wish a speedy recovery, and to your wonderful, wonderful team. But this is not all. We also have a very special surprise for you. A special message of congratulations from the President of Romania, His Excellency Klaus Werner Johannes. I kindly ask our Executive President, Hermann Patzinger, to read the message of the President of the Republic of Romania. Over to you, Hermann. Thank you, Sneska. Yes, it's an honor for me to read the letter from the President of Romania, His Excellency Klaus Werner Johannes. Taking place under such exceptional circumstances, the 2020 European Heritage Award Ceremony is a proof of our commitment to the preservation and the enhancement of our cultural heritage, a token of respect for culture. This year's Europa Nostra event is even more special for us. A Romanian project, the Ambulance for Monuments, receives the important Public Choice Award, shortly after having been awarded for its outstanding contribution to the protection of the cultural heritage through education, training, and public awareness raising. I warmly congratulate the team that initiated this project. Due to their vision, through the involvement of young people, of the specialists, authorities, and sponsors, many monuments at risk have been saved during the five years mm -hmm. since the ambulance exists, thus testing the viability of a model of social cohesion emerging from cultural values and local identity. I also warmly, warmly salute the public that ranked the Ambulance for Monuments first in their choices. I believe that many European citizens appreciated the Romanian project as a concrete expression of solidarity and an example for the appropriate use of these of the civic energies developed by culture and cultural heritage. In these difficult days, Europa Nostra, awarding a major prize to the Ambulance for Monuments initiative, reminds us of the statement assigned by Jean Monnet, one of the founding fathers of the European Union. Quote, if I were to do it again, I would start with culture. Today, through our commitment to the preservation of cultural heritage, we reassert that understanding and assuming our common history, it is what provides resilience to the European project. Its existence is the best opportunity. We have to cherish our cultural diversity. Preserving our heritage is by no means turning towards the past. On the contrary, it shows which are the values we intend to bequeath to the next generations. Our future is the outcome of the dialogue between cultures. It shape the results of both contemporary creativity and inspiration drawn from the achievements of the past. Our Europe, Europa Nostra, will be forever indebted to its culture and to the ones who serve and protect it. That is why our vision for a united Europe rests upon the humanistic messages of our cultural heritage and respects the social vitality that it provides improving democracy and promoting liberty. And of the latter and dear Public Choice Award winners, your president is really proud of you. Congratulations again and back to Snishka. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Herman. Many thanks, obviously, to the president of Romania for such an important message, not just stressing the importance of the Ambulance for Monuments project, but also pointing to the vital importance of heritage for the whole of Europe. And what a wonderful way to end our ceremony. And many thanks to you, Herman, not only for lending your voice to the message of President uh, Johannes, but also for your forceful leadership uh, of uh, the entire Europa Nostra movement. And now, Commissioner Gabriel, over to you for concluding message. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sneska.
Congratulations again on my behalf to the excellent team of the Ambulance for Monuments in Romania. You know, there are so many beautiful places in Europe that have heritage sites that need restoration, innovation and technical support. So many communities, small and large, that need our support and our expertise. Communities that can help us to understand the complex story of Europe better. What, what a great project. And Sneska, dear Herman, dear ladies and gentlemen, what a celebration of Europe's heritage power. Thank you very much. Many, many thanks, dear Commissioner Gabriel, dear Maria, for your very strong support to cultural heritage in Europe. Let's continue to work together. We have a lot of challenges ahead of us. Thank you for joining us tonight from Sofia in Bulgaria and for staying for the entire ceremony. And of course, also special thanks to Hermann Patzinger uh, for joining us from Berlin. Also, Professor Kuhn van Balen joining us from Antwerpen in Belgium. And thanks to all the award winners and jury members and jury chairs that were connected with us. And of course, a very special thanks to our large audience across Europe and around the world. Before ending, I just want to point out that you will now find in your chat box the links to our award booklet where you can find more information of all laureates of the European Heritage Awards, Europa Nostra Org Award 2020. And this is not all. You will also find the link to um, another publication where you will find a little bit more information of all the winners that we have announced this evening, the winners of the Grand Prix, the winner of the Public Choice Award, and the two winners of the Ilucidare special prizes. And last but not least, you will find uh, also in um, another uh, publication that we are launching tonight. Um, I really hope that you will agree with me that this evening was a fantastic proof of the amazing power of our togetherness. Our executive president wrote a special essay with this title, Togetherness, calling for a new heritage deal for Europe. And this, this essay was published by our invaluable partner, the European Investment Bank, uh, with which we are running a program called the Seven Most Endangered Program. And you will find the link in the digital version in the chat, an advanced, a sort of a preview copy, and we will soon launch in a more formal way the printed edition of this publication. But that's not all. We can't finish this evening with another, with another musical um, contribution and performance. But before, before that um, musical finale, I also want to invite as many of you to stay with us for the meet and greet the winners uh, after this ceremony. Normally, we would have a wonderful reception and we will all mingle and meet each other, embrace each other. But now we will have to do it in digital groups uh, where we can meet and talk to the winners. So please stay with us and you can learn and talk uh, to the winners uh, of, of our awards. But before, I promise you, we also want to uh, hear some music. And also, for the last thank you, I want to address that last thank you to the Europa Nostra staff team, led by Elena Bianchi, coordinator of our awards program, who are behind these digital curtains and who worked very, very hard to make this very special online celebration happen. And I told you, this is the very first time we are doing that. So I think that they have produced a miracle that everything was functioning so well and that all the connections with winners and personalities all around Europe work without any problem. So a big, big 
digital applause for the dream team of Europa Nostra. And now the musical finale. The Gypsy Quartet, Roberto de Brasov. These four musicians live today in France, but they are all originally from Romania. This could not have been more fitting to honor the winner of this year's Public Choice Award. This recording was organized by our partner, the Centre Européen de la Musique in Bougival, and will be presented by its president and Europa Nostra Council member, Georges Chaminet. And this recording was done as a contribution to our All to Joy Challenge on the European, during the European Year of Cultural Heritage in 2020, and it was recorded on a Europe Day in Bougival, in the garden in front of the Villa Viardot. Georges, over to you. It's a great honor to participate this evening in this beautiful ceremony. All my congratulations to the award recipients. Beethoven nous demande depuis 200 ans de changer de tonalité. Dans le récitatif du baryton, avant l'ode à la joie de Schiller, il demande, Freund, nicht diese Töne, plus jamais de ces tonalités, de ces tonalités de intolérance. Aujourd'hui, on a besoin d'appartenir à une seule race, la race humaine. Et qui de mieux que nos frères gitans, avec leur improvisation sur l'ode à la joie, qui nous présentent donc ce soir ce vent d'air frais, ce vent de voyage, celui qui fait partie de notre ADN. Donc, euh, rejoignez ce voyage, le voyage de devenir enfin humain. us uh, uh, during this evening and uh, please join us for the meet and greet uh, session with the winners. A special toast to all of you, stay safe, stay healthy, stay
stay joyful. Good evening to you. Thank you.